We often hear a lot about research on our environment that may feel like we're doomed. A lot of negative data that comes out, especially when it comes to global warming and ocean temperatures rising. And that's why as soon as I saw what researchers had discovered about coral reefs, I jumped at the chance to look into it in hopes of bringing you some much needed good news about our planet. We bring the images back to the lab and digitize them. More than 1,500 images that take one to two hours each to go through. And Adi Ken is dedicated to outlining the different species of coral in these images. She's a PhD candidate working at Jennifer Smith's lab at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. She uses colors to clearly differentiate each species, and her data collection turns into its own work of art. Like here you can see there are only a couple of patches. But what she does is far beyond magic with Photoshop. This research helps track progress and positivity. That's because she has witnessed signs of life and growth even after massive bleaching of coral reefs. It's really inspiring. It's really rewarding and gratifying to get to work on a system that's healthy and despite climate impacts. The images Adi and graduate and undergrad students have gone through come from Palmyra, an American territory, an island in the Pacific Ocean about 800 miles south of Hawaii that's only used by researchers. It's teeming with life. Um, Palmyra is really intense, like it can rain one minute and be hot and humid the next. Um, it's loud with birds calling all the time. Um, fish everywhere on the reef. It's, it has a, a huge abundance of life. Scuba divers take 80 images of Palmyra's reef at the same spots at least once a year. The plots are half a meter. I actually know a lot of the individual coral colonies by heart and I've been following them through time year after year. Um, I get to watch them grow and change. I got to visit um, for the first time in 2020. Um, and it felt like visiting old friends. That was when everything was bleached. In 2015, Palmyra's coral started to nearly die off. That's when 90% of the reef was bleaching. But about two years later, Adi points out the regrowth. Despite there being these big warm water events and coral bleaching that did occur there, um, the reefs have been able to bounce back. Jennifer Smith is a professor at UC San Diego, and this is her lab. You might say coral reefs are her expertise. This is the rock that the coral builds as it's growing. When you have a reef like this, the whole thing is built out of the rock that the corals lay down. Each one of these represents a different species, and there could be hundreds of species of corals on a given reef. She explains the value they have on our planet deposit rock essentially as they're growing and that creates these massive barriers around tropical islands. It creates surf, um, but it prevents erosion. It helps those islands resist damage from tsunamis and big storms. Um, they're important for fisheries. They're important for tourism. They generate huge amounts of revenue. You can see how within the same coral colony, some branches can be alive, some can be partially bleached, some can be dead and covered in algae. That's just a small sample used by Smith's lab. In the ocean, coral reef make up less than 1%, but they become home to nearly a quarter of the ocean's species. And what this team's latest research has discovered is when left untouched, like at Palmyra, without stresses of overfishing, pollution, coastal development, or tourism, coral can return to its healthy habitat. One of the most important things I think we've learned from this, um, the story of hope, is that by managing human impacts locally, managing what we put into the, the seawater, managing fishing, managing all of these activities that we do on land, we can give reefs a better chance of recovering and resisting these thermal assaults that are going to happen in the future. Wow, so we're fortunate they've bounced back, but yeah. still we've got to do our part right, to right. keep them in good shape. And that's the thing. I mean, obviously we can't leave everything untouched in the ocean. There's fishing. Yeah. There will be, you know, people out Absolutely. there enjoying the waters. But, you know, at least we can do small things. Our Love the colors, little parts. Right? I know, isn't it beautiful? Let's keep them colorful. Yeah, and I will point out, too, for those that don't know, coral bleaching is when you see the beautiful colors turn white. Right. So that's a sign that it's near dying. Uh, it is a result of global warming and the ocean temperatures heating up. But as we pointed out, if we reduce our carbon footprint, even by a little, it can lead to some improvement. Colorful and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks for uh, showing us that. Mm -hmm. That was uh, very educational. <laughs>